Hello. Today we are back in making a piggy build mode type game in Roblox Studio. This video might be a little longer than usual, and it's going to completely focus on the move and scale tools. Obviously, with the current system, it's really hard to make a long floor because you have to spam click to achieve that. That's why we're going to start with the scale tool. One thing I want to bring up, though, is that there is currently an issue with the selection boxes. While it doesn't seem that there is, it's actually all on the back end and it could end up causing some performance issues in the future. Basically, the selection box ends up getting duplicated many times all within one part. The easy way to fix this is to not put the selection box directly in the part. Instead, we will simply have one selection box in the starter GUI and only set the Adorni. Let's start by just cutting and pasting the extras folder from replicated storage to starter GUI. Now, rename the selection box to primary box because we will eventually have more than one selection box to use. Go on block placer and let's adjust the code to actually fit our new changes. First, there will be no more use for cloning the selection box since we're only using one. Next, make a variable for the new extras folder. Now, just replace any instance of target value.selectionbox with extras.primary box. All you need to do is just make the same changes to the script as I do. And as you can see, the selection boxes work just the same but now they are optimized and easier to use. Now, let's actually create the scale tool. Really just follow the same steps you use whenever you create a new tool. Create a button, then set the layout order, name, and text. Duplicate the primary box and name the clone, secondary box. This will be a thinner box that is used when a block is not technically considered the target yet and is only being hovered over. I'm setting the color 3 to a nice orange and the line thickness to half, 0.025, of the primary boxes, 0.05. Now, let's incorporate the secondary box into our script. Wherever it sets the primary box as a dorney to nil, also set the secondary box as to nil. Actually, we do this often throughout our script so let's create a function where it sets the adornees to nil. Then, we will call this function wherever we need to in the script. Since both scaling and moving use a different target filtering system, let's create a separate LCF statement in the render step function. Create a new condition as, tool.value is greater than or equal to 5. Then, set the condition, tool.value is greater than 1, to, tool.value is less than 5. Take the, colors, table and put it outside of the render step function so we can access it in more places in the script. This part's optional, but you can leave notes for which color is which tool. However, you must add a new color for the scale tool, I'm doing orange. Now, for our new target filtering system, since you shouldn't be able to scale or move the base plate, all you need to check is that 1, the mouse is hovering over an object, and 2, that object is in the placed blocks folder. Since we also want to be able to set the target to nil, make sure to add an else statement. Now, in the case that the mouse is hovering over an object in placed blocks, set the secondary box as a dorney to that object. Also, let's not set the primary box's color every frame. Instead, let's set it once when the tool is changed, for optimization and facilitation. Do the same with the secondary box. Let's put the reset accessories function earlier in the script so we can access it in our render step function. Now, in the case that the mouse is hovered over the base plate or the sky, we will call reset accessories. Now let's test our script. And as you can see, it works perfectly. One thing we forgot to do is add the button to the key code list, though. Let's go into the script and simply add 5 to the string. Now, let's make it so that you can actually scale the part. Go to the button 1up function and add a conditional statement for if the value is 5. Let me introduce you to an instance in Roblox Studio that you may or may not know exists. Just duplicate a part and put it into the workspace as our test subject. Now, in the extras folder, search up handles. Name the handles part, scale, and make sure the style is resize. Set the color to whatever you want and now you have your draggable handles. To see how it looks, just set the adornee to the part in workspace and there's the magic. Technically, this is not how they look in the official piggy build mode, but they function the same way. To get the more official look, you can mess around with spear handle adornments. Now, set the adornee to nil and you can now delete the part. We have to script these handles in order for them to actually work, though. First, simply set the adornee to nil in the reset accessories function. 
Then, let's script for what happens when the mouse button is released and the scale tool is equipped. We need to make sure that the secondary box adorni is actually set to an object. If it is, make the target dot value that adorni. Also set the primary box as adorni and scale handles adorni to that target value. However, if the secondary box does not have an adorni, we will just call reset accessories. Perfect. Now, when you click on a part, the handles will appear and the selection box will thicken. However, there is an issue. We want the handles to stay even when the mouse is not hovering over the part and only disappear when the mouse is clicked off that part. You can do this by going to the target changed function and make sure that the accessories will only disappear when the mouse leaves the part under the condition that the tool is less than 5, not scale or anything above. Ah uh, oh. We still have this problem. Go to the LCF statement of tool.value is greater than or equal to 5, and instead of calling reset accessories, let's only reset the secondary box. Perfect. Now, even if the mouse isn't hovering over the part, the handles will stay until the mouse actually clicks off. However, the handles still don't work yet, so let's make that happen. Let's create a boolean variable called dragging that will tell us when the handles are being dragged. Also create a number variable called bold delta that will work with finding initial values of the scaling part. Start with a scale.mousebutton one down function. This will tell us when any of the handles are starting to be pressed down by the player's mouse. All you will do in this function is simply set the dragging variable to true. Now, let's make a function for when the mouse moves while the handles are pressed down, that is, dragged. The two arguments we receive from this are the face of the block that is being dragged, based on which of the six handles are being dragged, and the distance that it is being dragged at. Create a variable in this function named delta, which will be the difference between the drag distance and the old delta variable. Now, you want to make sure that the absolute value of a little over the distance is greater than or equal to the grid snap, which is 4. Now, round delta to fit your snap. Let's create some new variables. Create a vector that is based on the dragging face named direction. Now create a new variable called size, which will be the absolute value of the direction. Our last variable here, end size, will be the original size plus the new additions, the absolute value of the direction multiplied by the rounded delta. Now, create a table constant that will convert the face to its axis. Just simply copy what I put down here. Let's apply it into our code. Find the axis of the end size that is being manipulated and make sure it's greater than zero. If it is, resize the block and set old delta to the distance. Now, we need a function for when the mouse button is released. Oh, wait, we already have one. Go into the button one up function and create a new conditional statement for if dragging is true. If so, set dragging to false and set old delta to zero, their default values. Are we done? Of course not. I'm not sure if you guys noticed but we only changed the block size on the client side, so nothing is going on in the server, the block is not actually changing size. Let's create a scale block remote event to call when the handles are released. In case you don't know how to do this, simply duplicate any of the remote events we already created and rename it to scale block. Now, call it in the same conditional statement we were working with. Pass on three arguments, the part, the part's new size, and the part's new C-frame, position and orientation. Navigate to the build handler server script. In here, we will receive the event signal and the passed on arguments. Simply set the block size to the given size and C frame to the given C frame. Ah uh oh. While the part is scaling, it's not reassuring its position correctly. Go to the block placer script and pivot the block to its current C frame plus, or in C frame language, times, the new modified calculated C frame. Also, the remote event is actually not firing, because at this point in time, the handle's adorni was already set to nil. Get rid of that conditional statement. Perfect. Now, we can see that the part gets scaled properly and it's actually changing on the server. However, there is still an issue. When you scale a rotated part, the layer does not scale the right way. This is because the part and its layer have two different orientations. 
I have a really hacky way of fixing this, and I have yet to find a more efficient way. Also, I forgot to mention, but shout out to Magical Mario Mario for responding to a dev forum post that helped me a lot with getting the handles working. I borrowed majority of this code. But anyways, create a module script in replicated storage named Resize Layer. With this script, instead of changing the orientation of the layer, we change the size. Start by creating a function called Resize, with the part and its layer as the arguments. Create a variable for the difference between the two orientations as well as an ordered table of the part size components. We will reorder this table for the layer. The rest of this function is just reordering the table based on the differences between the part and layer's orientations. Just copy down what I type. We will finish this function off by returning the reordered vector. Go to build handler and create a variable for requiring this module script. Now, let's apply the following changes to our script, also for the scale block event, I made some changes off camera, so make sure to add that line of code. Never mind, delete that line. The last thing we need to do to get this scale tool fully functioning is just make sure that the tool.value is equal to 5, else if conditional statement in the button one up function applies strictly to when the dragging variable is false. And as you can see, everything is working flawlessly. Now that we're done with the scale tool, let's work on the move tool. This will be much easier to create because we already have the selection box business figured out and it doesn't use complex delta calculation and whatnot. First, put line 199 and 200 in a conditional statement that checks if the tool is on scale. We will create an LCF statement within that to check if the tool is on move. Now, let's create a new tool by following all the normal steps. Create a new button and set the layout order, name, and text. We will add it to the key code list later. Duplicate the scale handles and adjust the color to your liking. Also, make sure to set the style to movement in the name to move. Let's adjust our code to also fit in the move tool. I'm not going to spend much time explaining this but if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Like we did with the scale handles, create a mouse button one down function in which you set dragging to true. Now create a C frame variable named cur C frame. This is where we will hold the initial C frame of the part before moving it. In our move dot mouse button one down function, set cur C frame to the block C frame. Now create a move dot mouse drag function with the same arguments we got when we did this with the scale tool, face and distance. This function really only needs to be one line, it's just a slightly complex line. Let's dissect it. We're adding, or in C-frame language, multiplying, a modified C-frame to the block's current C-frame. The modified C-frame in question is the cur C-frame variable with an added position of the faces vector multiplied by the snap distance. And I lied earlier, we're not multiplying the block C-frame by this, we're actually straight up setting the block C-frame to this. Now, in the dragging conditional statement of the button one up function, let's call a move block remote event. We don't need to pass on the size as an argument, just the block and its C-frame. And of course, actually create a remote event named move block or this will not work. Let's receive this event on the server side with our two arguments, the block and its C-frame, and of course, the player that fired the event by default. Really all you need to do is just set the block C-frame to the given C-frame. Create a get property changed signal position function for the placed part in place block dot on server event and change the layer's position. Just kidding. Oops. We forgot to do several things for this move tool. First, make sure to add a color for it in the colors table in block placer. Also add it to the key code table so that we could change to this tool by simply pressing that key on our keyboard. And, voila, it works. Never mind, I spoke way too soon. We need to add it to the reset accessories function in block placer. Also, when I said, just kidding, earlier, I it turns out I was just kidding about that. We actually do need that get property changed signal function in build handler.
Perfect. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you benefited from this video. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask in the comments. By the way, shout out to Bababak for suggesting this idea. Again, thank you for watching, and if you guys have any concept ideas for my concept game, you can also leave those in the comments because I will make sure to check them. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.